Hello and welcome to RC Model Reviews and here's a review a lot of people have been waiting for. It's the Turnigy 9XR, the successor to the ever popular Turnigy 9X. So I ordered one just over a week ago and it arrived and here it is. Let's unbox it. Didn't take long, did it? There we go, that's the new 9XR. And what's different? Well, let's put them side by side so you can see what might be different. And quite a bit, really. I mean, cosmetically, this is a dramatically, the 9XR is a dramatically different radio. It's got lots of shiny chrome on it, or chromey looking plastic. And uh, it's sort of, don't know, I suppose it's more modern looking, if you like that, but um, first impressions can be deceptive because I've had a little play with this radio and to be totally honest I don't like it and I'll tell you why I don't like it now as you know this is my favorite radio the 9x the old 9x is, I use this 95 percent of the time because it just works it's cheap it's light it's small it's convenient if I drop it again I won't cry when it smashes into a million pieces again because <laughs> for the price of two switches on my JR transmitter I can buy a whole new radio in the 9x and uh, it's also convenient with my grip because I've got average size hands and I fly 3D so I can get my thumbs from right one corner of the gimbals right to the other without stretching and having to constantly reposition my thumbs. I've mentioned this before in reviews of other radios which I found not as good as the 9XR, 9X I should say, and so um, I really love this radio. This one's got the Free Sky DIY installed and it's a nice clean convenient installation, there's no dangly wires, there's nothing else. Brilliant, excellent. It has some downsides. I mean, let's face it, it doesn't have slidey paddles on the side. The reason I still fly with my other radios occasionally is because my Hi-Tech Optic 6, the Aurora 9, the JR XG8, and the JR 9X2 all have little flippy paddles, which are great for flaps and spoilers and retracks. The 9X, the Turnigy 9X, doesn't have any flippy paddles. So when they said they were bringing out a 9XR, I thought, oh, maybe they're gonna turn this transmitter into one that will replace all my other transmitters because it'll have the flippy paddles, but I was disappointed there's no flippy paddles. It's a major omission. If they put flippy paddles on this radio, I'd have been in hog heaven. I'd have been a happy camper, but no, nah, they didn't take that opportunity. Shame, but never mind. What else about this radio do I like and not like? Well, the first thing I noticed was it looks pretty damn cheap, to be honest. Um, for example, on the old 9X, I've got some nice aluminium knobs, aluminium knobs here, they're anodized black. They go brown in the sun, but you know, they're solid. They've got a good quality feel to them. On the 9XR, you get plastic. And I'm like, okay, not such a big deal, but again, they missed an opportunity to do something wonderful. Now these knobs have a center position, but there's no little click, there's no detent when the knob is in the middle position. So you don't know, just by feel, where your knob is. I mean, it's so much nice if you can just turn this and it goes click at the middle and you keep turning. So if you've got something like um, flapperons, if you want, because there's no flappy pedal, so you put flapperons on here. Um, if it clicks when it's in the middle position, you know your flapperons are neutral. You can turn them up or down, but you can always get them back to dead neutral. Without the little detent, you can't see if it's actually, or you can't feel if it's in the neutral position. You'll actually have to look down at it. And the center position isn't clearly marked. It's dark blue on a black knob. So nah, it's a bit of a fail, really. A fail because they could have done so much better. Not because it doesn't work, but they really could have improved it, improved on the old one. It, it strikes me that they, the people who have designed this radio have never actually used the damn thing because another example. Now the trainer switch on the old 9X, it's a pain in the backside because with the standard firmware, it has to be uh, basically held on if you want to, if you're the master, if you're the pilot in control and you want to fly the plane, you've got to hold the switch on while you fly the plane, which means it's actually a little bit inconvenient because it compromises your movement of the thumb a little bit, not much, just a little bit. With the new version, however, you can't even reach the trainer switch if you've got your thumb on the stick. They've moved the switch right around the back. So if I hold the transmitter in my normal grip, I can't even reach the trainer switch. And that's ridiculous. Why do that? It's just ruined that piece of functionality. As I say, the people who designed this radio probably never use it, never flown RC, I don't know. They could have done so much better. The off-on switch is an ugly little horrible cheap plastic looking thing. You know, this is the kind of radio I would expect to find in one of those cheap RTFs, just from the quality look of it, the, you know, the, the plasticky and the, and the you know, ickiness. I'd expect to find this on a $200 RTF. You know, um, I wouldn't, ex this is a better radio in terms of feel quality, build quality, it just feels better. 
I would have not, I would have expected them to improve some of those ergonomics on the 9XR, but they didn't. They stuffed them up. Um, even the little multi-way switch here for doing the, um, you know, changing the menu settings. The old one, it has, if I hold it up to the microphone here, hear that? It's a tapped switch. Every time I press it, it clicks so I know that the switch has been pressed. This one, the new one, dead silent. There's no tactile feedback. That's a shame, and, I, and I've seen on other videos on YouTube that the buttons themselves don't work when it gets cold. There's some kind of problem going on there, and when it gets down to below, say, 5 degrees C, the buttons simply stop working, and your transmitter becomes useless. So more design issues with the plastic and the, the layout, I don't know. It's just the, the one thing that might be better, I don't know yet, are the trim switches, because on these, the old 9X, the trims were very clicky, but often they didn't work. Sometimes they'd click, but there'd be no contact, and you'd be trying to put trim on, nothing would happen. Or they'd stick, and the trim would go all the way over. They were cheap and nasty, but the new one has kind of got a rocker switch. It's got a little bit of a click, but we'll see if it's more reliable. Only time will tell. So yeah, that's basically it. Now you notice also, this one has, or well, the new one has the transmitter antenna in the handle, which is brilliant, but only if you've got a module that accepts the little RF jack that needs to be on the back of the module. Most of the modules, of course, you buy now, like this FreeSky one, they don't have that little jack. So you're still going to end up with a antenna poking out the back of your radio, unless you do the DIY, but then you have to find a cover to go over here. Now, um, one thing that I really don't like is if I put this radio down on the bench, the old 9X, rock solid. Look at that. Sits on the bench really solid. This one, woo -woo. so if you've got this laying on the ground, you're trying to program it, it's going to be bouncing all over the place. If you put a module in here, it gets even worse. Look, trying to press the buttons with the transmitter on the ground, the damn thing's rocking and rolling all over the place because you may have only one hand free. So again, I see there's actually a couple of little screw holes on the back here as if you could mount another little bar at the back, but it'd be nice if it had some kind of feet or something to support it when it was sitting down flat, but it doesn't. You know, I mean, I have to say it again, it looks like someone has got this radio and thought, let's make it look really flash. Let's put some silver shiny bits on it and let's, you know, move bits around and, you know, like the switch and who cares if it's a real pain in the ass to use? It'll look really cool. And I'm afraid that's not what I'm looking for in a radio. I don't want a radio that looks really cool. I want one that's practical and ergonomic and works and has the features I want, like the slidey paddles. So from a purely aesthetic and user point of view, I'm afraid that if I was buying a new radio tomorrow, I'd buy another one of these. I wouldn't buy one of these. It's just too damn awkward and inconvenient. But that's just the ergonomics. That's the first part of the review. What about what's inside? What about the electronics? How, do, how well does this damn thing work? Well, that'll be in the next video, which I'll be doing next week, because I've got to, I'll strip it down, I'll do some comparisons, but from what I've been able to, to gather, uh, basically it's pretty much the same design radio as the old one, electronically speaking. However, what they've done, which is really good, they've included the USB programming system, so you can reprogram the firmware, although, in the little brochure here, it says if you do it without the permission of Turnergy, then your, val your warranty is invalid. But ah, you can't really you know, stuff too much up if you follow the instructions that are everywhere on the internet. And to that end, it has a little jack in here where you can plug in your, there's a little cable, but it's not a standard cable. So there must be an adapter cable you have to get to do that. Actually, it's a JTAG, is it? I don't mean, maybe it's actually, I don't know if they have got the programmer in there. I'll have to check, I just assumed they did. I think maybe they've just brought out the, the little um, programming pins from inside. So. If that's the case, you still have to have a programmer to do it. You can't just plug it in your USB port. I'll check, I'll confirm for you, because this is a very quick video. I wanted to get this out as soon as the radio arrived, because everyone's saying, we want your opinions, and that's what I'm giving you. On the top, it has JR and Futaba buddy box connections, which is really great. So for your simulator and that, brilliant. For buddy boxing, useless, because you can't reach the damn switch, as I said before. But if you want to use this for your uh, simulator, this is going to be much better than the old one which um, only had the JR connector and you had to take the module out before it would even work. So hopefully you don't have to do that in Voskut, no module anyway. Um, so there you go, and apparently the LCD is backlit. I haven't put a battery in it yet because it's another thing. The old one, you got an eight cell AA battery holder. With this one, they give you nothing. And 
They say in the instructions, use a three cell LiPo. They've got a special LiPo that made just for the radio, which has over and under voltage protection, I believe. Um, and they have a little balance port connector here. So you don't actually plug the main battery lead in, you plug in the balance port connector because it doesn't draw much power. You can run fine from the balance port connector. That's excellent. But I would rather use a LiFE battery than a LiPo because uh, LiPos, as we all know, are not always trustworthy especially if you've got a transmitter. You leave this in the sun, in the baking hot sun, forget about it, you got a LiPo in there. I don't know what would happen, but I wouldn't want to try it. So, and of course it is black. It's black, so it's gonna get hot. I don't know why people keep making transmitters black, because you leave them in the sun. And when you leave black things in the sun, it gets really, really hot. So this has got some silver to reflect the heat, but there's still a fair amount of black on this, so we'll have to wait and see. Uh, it's got the ER9X software. Uh, or a version of the ER9X software, so programmability will be much improved on the old one, although you could reflash the old one if you needed to. And 16 model memories thanks to the new software, and that's other, another bonus because I found I ended up with two of these because I can only get eight models on each one uh, without reflashing the software. So those are some bonus, some, some positive features, and uh, as I say, in the next video I'll be taking the back off it. We'll look at the build quality inside, just how well it's put together, and how many similarities and differences there are between the two radios. Now there's no point in putting it on the spectrum analyzer because it doesn't come with a module and its RF performance will depend on what type of module you put in there. You can put in a free sky, you can put in a, a Corona, you can put in a spectrum module if you can get one. Um, you can put in you know any module you can buy for the JR type connection you can put in there. Now I've heard there's been a couple of issues with modules that don't quite fit in terms of the length of the pins and things. I'll check that out as well as best I can but I've only got a certain number of modules here. And of course, the, the annoying thing, as I mentioned before, is if you've got a module like the FreeSky one, you're still going to have to use your external antenna, your, your antenna on the back, because this, the only ones I've seen that might possibly have a jack so far are DSM-2. Nobody wants a DSM-2 module these days. It's just unless you're just little bind and flies. So most people, I would think, would be using the FreeSky module or maybe even the Turnigy module. But if you've got an old Turnigy 9X with a module in it, you can't just unplug it from that and plug it in here because the old Turnigy 9X modules don't have an antenna on them. They have a cable that goes inside to the built-in antenna on the top. So it's not going to be an easy job to simply replace a Turnigy radio with one of these until Turnigy is shipping a module that's compatible. But that's it. That's just a quick look at it. I hope you'd, I thought you'd appreciate seeing this as soon as it came in. Uh, I will be doing the full technical teardown next week. And what I will be doing next week also is I've also got the Aurora A9 and the JRXG8 to do part two of. So I'm going to line up all the radios. We're going to do some comparisons. We're going to see which are the strengths and weaknesses of all these radios and which one would probably suit you better than the rest. So thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, put them on the bottom of the video as usual. If you've um, got any uh, comments, put them on the bottom of the video as well. Go to the rcmodelreviews.com forums. And if you think the video was worth watching, give it a thumbs up because that always helps. Thank you. I will see you again in part two of this review next week.